count. Run. Okay, so welcome to part two of Study Up Your Plate Care, where we are going to be talking about armor options. First off, I'm just going to tell you guys the armor options that I use, and then I'm going to be talking about all the other ones. So, the ones I use is a ceramic, not a ceramic, a Kevlar and steel combination, and I'll talk into why I decided to choose these two after I do a quick little spiel about all the other types of armor. So there are four main types of armor. Some of you guys are thinking that there's only three, but in the most recent years, a new new type of armor came out and it's starting to become more widely available to civilians and not really adopted too much in the military. So there is ceramic, steel, Kevlar, and plastic, or polyethylene, or some sort of weird, long, complex name that I can't really <laughs> pronounce. So let's talk about Kevlar first. So Kevlar is some of the oldest technology for personal protection. Steel has obviously been used for a long time, but Kevlar is one of the oldest technologies for personal protection. And the one that I have right here is level 3A. So Kevlar comes in two flavors, level two and level three, level 3A. And if you're looking at level 2 armor, which is typically going to be police surplus because it's older, I would just stay away from that. Because the cost of going from level 2 to level 3 is, I don't know, like 5 bucks, 10 bucks. And level 3 has much more stopping power capabilities. For example, this can stop 44 Magnum, while with the level 2 armor, 44 Magnum would just punch straight through that. So, if you are thinking about going a Kevlar route, just go with level 3A and it'll be pretty good. It'll stop handgun rounds, but not rifle rounds. The armor that I have right here, I bought from Tactical Assault Gear, and it costed 155 bucks for a front and back. So, 75 bucks, $77 plate. Now let's talk about steel. So, recently, AR-500 blew up tremendously because of the prepper community. So it's really popular within civilians, and that's what I have right here. This is a AR-500 plate. It is a quarter inch AR-500 plate coated in Linex. A thin coat of Linex looks like probably about a quarter, not a quarter inch, but probably about an eighth of an inch. And yeah, <laughs> that's all I really have to say about that. AR-500, as you guys know, if you shoot AR-500 targets, it is a steel, this is a quarter inch. Most targets are three eighths of an inch, but because this isn't a steel target and you're not really worried about dimpling, because I know with steel targets you worry about cratering and dimpling and all dimples and all that stuff, but with body armor, if it dimples, it doesn't really matter. That's not, that's barely any back base deformation in terms of body armor, because you know, I'll, in, the few, in the other two I'll, I'll talk more about back base deformation, but with steel, with steel, there's virtually none of that and it's very multi-hit capable. So with steel armor, like you look at steel targets, they can take hundreds of rounds, but granted with this quarter inch steel, it's not going to be as much, especially if you're targeting it at one spot. But out of the four armor options that I just mentioned, steel is going to be the most multi-hit capable. So it's going to be able to take the most amount of rounds, but also steel armor is only rated at level 3. Which means it's basically rated up to 308. Anything past 308, it's basically, people don't know. I think it's also rated up to 750, 760 by 54 Dragunov, but it won't be able to take too much abuse from that because this is only a quarter of an inch and armor piercing rounds will just go straight through this guy. So now let's talk about ceramic and I do not have any ceramic examples quite simply because I decided to go with the steel route and yeah. So ceramic armor is basically what it sounds like. It's ceramic which means it's very brittle. So if you drop if you drop a ceramic plate, it's going to shatter and it's, the entire thing is going to be compromised and you're not going to really want to be shot wearing that. So ceramic is more fragile than steel, but it can stop higher caliber weapons, higher, more, cal more powerful weapons because the way it's designed. The ceramic basically crumbles and it absorbs the energy that way versus the steel, which is like, nah, just smacks it away because it's harder than it. But so with ceramic armor, you'll be able to start up to 30 odd six armor piercing, 308 armor piercing, 760 by 54R. Its ceramic is also multi hit by SAMI definitions, SAPI definitions. It's multi hit by military definitions, which is basically four rounds within with, with one inch spacing of each other. So ceramic is multi hit in that definition, but with AR-500, it's going to be a lot more multi-hit capable. So, you know, with AR-500, you could probably put five, 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 six rounds right on top of each other. Just basically just yeah, right on top of each other, point blank range, not point blank range, but you know, right on top of each other. But with ceramic, if you shot a five, five, six round into the ceramic plate 
and he shot another one right on top of it, it's a very high likelihood that second round is just going to punch straight through that and you're going to have a pretty bad day. So that's it with Ceramic. And Ceramic, I thought Ceramic was extremely light. I thought Ceramic was a lot lighter than Steel. But I'm wrong. It's around the same weight. Maybe a pound lighter, two pounds lighter, but it's still nothing to be like, oh, steel, huh? That's pretty heavy. But ceramic and steel, they're almost the same weight. So I thought ceramic was like three pounds, but I was wrong. So good thing I didn't buy ceramic, otherwise I'd be a little bit buttered. So the last armor option that I'm going to talk about is polyethylene, the DPE, whatever you want to call it, it's the plastic. And this is relatively new. I would say this came onto the scene about two or three years ago, and it's not really standardized like AR500. I know AR500 level 3 is not actually a level 3 rating, that's not recognized by any military standards, but it is very multi-hit capable and AR500 is fairly consistent across the board. But once you reach this new plastic polyethylene armor, it really varies quite a bit because some of this plastic armor is rated for handguns, while other manufacturers have it rated for rifles. And to be honest, they, have, they all have their own tests, but it's really hard to sort of decide on whether or not you're actually going to believe them because you're putting a life on the line with it basically when you put it in your body armor systems. So because of that, this new plastic armor, it's very... Eh. You don't really know what to think about it. And I have thought about purchasing it because it is extremely light. It weighs at 3 pounds, which is half the weight of AR-500 ceramic. It's just tremendously light. But the problem that I'm stuck on is that I don't know how effective it is. There are certain brands who say that this armor is extremely effective. They've tested it. they done tons of lab tests through it, and then there's other manufacturers who just sort of have that same label on there. They say it's rated for these things. They have some weird sort of obscure lab test them that I'm not so sure of because if you, I don't, I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of ballistic labs out there. It's so many that I don't really know what to think about it, and they have it tested by some weird ballistic lab, but they don't have any like footage of people shooting it, and you know what? I don't doubt that it could stop like 5.56 or 3.08 if it's rate, if they say it can stop that quite simply because if they get exposed that's going to be a huge ordeal but I just don't I just don't trust the manufacturers quite simply because they're so small and there's so much proprietary within the with the materials and the ratings are just such a spectrum I really don't know about this plastic armor, but I am trying to look more into it. I'm trying to find a manufacturer that'll, let, that'll send me a plate so I can shoot it up, and then if it actually stops, if it actually stops what it's rated for, and maybe a little bit more, I'll be more inclined to purchase it, more inclined to push it with, onto you guys because steel's heavy as fuck, and yeah, steel's just really fucking heavy. And another thing is I have seen a few of the videos about testing these plastic armors. And with these plastic armors, there's a huge amount of back face deformation. So what that means is when you when something hits the plates, the energy has to go somewhere. It's not like steel where it's basically just reflected. It's deposited into the plate and it absorbs some of it. So there's this huge bulge coming out of the back. So in terms of what that means is that it's going to be like someone's punching you in the chest, which is... Not, which is gonna hurt, but it's not like getting shot in the chest, so obviously I'd much rather have that. But it's still, it's still something to consider. So that's why, I mean, the main reason why I have this, this Kevlar armor behind the steel armor is that for some reason, I don't know why I would get shot, but if I was shot wearing this, having this steel plate just hit you in the back like that is not gonna be too comfortable. But if you have this little pad, It'll help absorb some of it. So this is just basically my ceram my Kevlar shock absorbing pad, my Kevlar trauma pad, and yeah. So basically those are the four armor options. And depending on your applications, that's that's what's gonna dictate which which options you're gonna wanna choose. So if you are a if you're like me, civilian, uh, basically waiting for the zombie apocalypse to happen, wait, basically waiting for Negan to roll up and start popping caps, I would go with steel because steel has that multi-hit capability. So if you are shot once away in that steel plate, you'll still be able to use that steel plate. Comparatively, all the other options, if you're shot once wearing that Kevlar armor, well, Kevlar is also rated that multi-hit. Well, not multi-hit, but Kevlar can stop multiple rounds. Just quite simply the design, it's just, basically imagine like a, it's just a lot of cloth layered together, so it just catches the bullet. But if you're shot, wearing ceramic armor, it's going to crumble, it's going to degrade, you're not going to be able to reuse that. If you're shot wearing the plastic armor, similar, but it's just going to be caved in and 
it won't be too comfortable. And also the entire thing's gonna be compromised and it might not stop the next round that's coming at you. So if you're like me, waiting for the apocalypse, Steel armor is going to be your best bet, but if you are military, if you are in a situation where you will have V-Supply and it's not your money, obviously I'd go with the ceramic because that's proven. Plastic, the, deep, the polyethylene, not proven yet, not going to really touch on that too much. But if, you, if you're in the military and you have the option for ceramic plates that can stop 30-06 armor piercing and you're shot once wearing that, you survive and you go back to base and you're issued a new plate, that's all, that's all good because you're back with a new plate. The supply is an option, and it's not your money. So you get a, so you know what? You don't have to shell out that 300 bucks per plate if you are shot. So that's basically my stance. Not my stance. That's basically my ideas towards body armor. You know, from like I said, my applications where there is no resupply available, and I'm not gonna stock up on like 10 ceramic plates because. I don't know. I got I got enough of my little gun projects going on to just, or just throw plates in my closet and just stockpile it. And yeah, also ceramic ceramic armor has a shelf life of I forgot, I forgot how long it is, but it's like eight, ten years. All body armor has a shelf life. So for example, this Kevlar has a shelf life, expires in five. Well, it's warranted for five years. But with the steel armor, it doesn't really have a shelf life. It's steel. It's AR500. It is coated in Linex, so it's not going to rust. And even if it does rust, it's not going to chew through a quarter inch of steel. <laughs> and yeah, because I, I, some of my AR500 targets rusted. I shot it. All the rust just blew the fuck off. And you know what? It's all better now. So that's basically my stance on body armor. I went with the AR500 and Kevlar rounds. If I were to redo this, I'd probably do the same thing, but I'd buy some ceramic armor to use instead of my AR-500. And once that ceramic armor is shot through, I'd probably just throw in that the AR-500 and it will be good. Because, I'm, I don't know, that's basically my stance on this. Or maybe try out that polyethylene armor and if, I, if that gets shot, I'll just throw on the AR-500 afterwards if it is during the zombie apocalypse and yeah. Alright guys, okay, I don't even know why I'm talking about getting shot because it's probably never going to happen. And even if the zombie apocalypse does happen, I'm probably not going to get shot. Okay, whatever. Getting too far off track. So that's basically me and my policies towards body armor, my philosophy behind body armor, and educating you guys a little bit more about body armor. And you know, got my little plate carrier on for this. Next video is going to be outfitting this with pouches, med things, even though I don't really know much about med things, and a hydration kit. So thanks for joining this video. Thanks for watching this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll catch you guys next time.